Hello, hello, and welcome back. Today's episode is going to be about program lighting within Reaper. And what this means is that we're going to take certain triggers and make them automatically turn on and off lighting for a live show or for a DJ session or whatever your needs may be. Uh, this will be specifically for Reaper, and it's going to be through a company called Entech that makes this cool little box called DMXis or DMXIS, however anyone wants to pronounce it. I call it DMXIS and it works for me, it's been great. What it has is a USB connection that hooks up to the computer and it basically converts the signal that's starting on your computer into DMX. So as you can see, it's a three pin and a five pin, uh, not to be used at the same time, but rather independently um, to connect all of your lights to the chain has a foot switch on it as well. Uh, I've never used that before, but I imagine that's for some sort of foot control of the lighting. But you'll need this box in order to do that. And I guess I'll just kind of jump right into the basic setup for how to use it with Reaper. So I have an open session here and normally I would have a song, you know, on one track that I would be doing the lights to. But to keep it simple, I'll just show you how to set up and route everything properly. So I'm going to start with brand new track or if you'd like you can do virtual instrument and you could start with DMXs. It's looking for hardware, it's offline, now it's connected, it reads the box, we're good. So this is the basic interface for it and it's essentially a lighting board on your computer. Uh, if you've ever been to a venue sometimes you see next to the sound guy there'll be another board with faders and buttons on it and that's completely independent of the audio, it's a lighting board. And what this company has done is they've created a way for you to control this on your computer through MIDI. So let's, let's start by choosing a light. Let's assume we have this light in our collection. So the way that this works is every channel is a DMX address. So if you have a light that has red, green, blue, and a dimmer, as a control, that means that's a four channel light. Sometimes you have six channels, sometimes you have 10 channel, 12 channel lights. They all have multiple functions, but um, this is basically how you address the lighting. So if you, want, if you want two lights that have four channels each, and again, that means there's, each light has four independent channels of control, then you have to start with the first four and then the second four would start on five. So that would mean one light's DMX address is channel one and the other is channel five. And it's basically like a street address. That's how it works. It's like the, the signal goes down through the cable and when it gets to channel one, it stops off at that light and tells it what to do. And channel five will tell channel five's light what to do. Uh, that's how you basically connect them in a line all the way down. And this program, can, you can get up to, I believe, 512. Yep, 512 channels before you run out. <clears throat> so back to one here. Let's assume we have a light in our collection. If you right-click on the fader, you can choose from a list. And this is just pretty generic uh, and sometimes common um, lighting fixtures. And... Sometimes they don't have exactly what we need, but you can create them through their own fixture library. But let's see what we have on here. Something hopefully generic. Uh, let's do a four-way dimmer. So basically what I was just talking about. Four channels, we can assume this one's red, green, blue, and, a, and this one's a dimmer, or all four of them are dimmers. Doesn't really matter for this, this um, for the purpose of what we're doing here. So basically you have one light with four channels of control, its current DMX address is channel one, okay? So to control these, we have to use the piano roll. So in Reaper, let's make four bars here. We, you, you, uh, you're gonna select these, go up to insert, new MIDI item, and there you, you double click on that and you have your piano roll, okay? We don't need this because we're not doing anything with velocity at the moment. And what I like to do 
is I like to change this to this layout because what we can do is assign the light to certain channels. Okay, so now here's here's the important part. You have to have this react with this over here. So what we do is use this like a piano in a sense. Okay, so these are your buttons. What we're going to do is we're going to right click on the fader, press learn, and now you can control it with MIDI. You can have a keyboard in front of you if you want, or you can have uh, like a machine control or some type of pad box that allows you to press buttons, but you can also do it right here within Reaper. So I'm going to click on this, and now you can see when I click that note, the fader's going up and down. So let's do it for all four channels. Next one up. And the next one. And also don't be confused by the fact that these numbers here uh, are independent of these. So just because this one says zero and it's connecting to channel one, these numbers have nothing to do with what channel you're putting it on. You could do it that way if you wanted to, but again, for this, this purpose, it doesn't actually matter and they're not actually meant to be the exact same. You can customize this layout however you want. So if you double right click on the note, you can actually name it. So we're going to name it dimmer one, dimmer two, and so on. Now you have four channels that can individually control those faders. Okay. So now what we can do is we can set this to loop. So when I play it, it's going to loop. What we can do now is punch in some notes. So that's moving pretty quick. So if we want it to just move on da, 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 real boring quarter notes, we can do it like this. Click once, select it, drag it to wherever you want. Just like that. Okay. So then when I play it, you can watch here. It's going to do all that there. So let's, let's say that you have this hooked up in, in a practical way. You have a dimmer box, which would be maybe you have a regular four channel dimmer box, which usually has two outlets per channel. So that means you can have two things plugged into this channel, two on this one, two on that one, and two on the, the last one. Essentially, you could have eight lights. So I actually did this earlier on in the touring days is, is I, I actually had work lights, like those little halogen ones you would put up when you're painting walls or you're doing construction or whatever. You know, they sell them at Home Depot for five or ten bucks. So we'd plug them into that dimmer pack, and this is how I would have them turn on and off automatically. So if I had two on one side of the stage, two right next to it, two in the middle, and then two on the end, then they would basically, in this way, if this was playing like that, it would go from one side all the way over on and off, just like that, automating the lights on and off. So that would be a, a real practical, practical way of using the lights. What you can also do in this circumstance is you can adjust the velocity this way. Or if you wanted to look at it down here, you can do it this way too. But because I like to keep things uh, fairly gridded, I, uh, I usually do it this way. And if you do it that, like that, see the lights only go up a little bit. So you can control how much power is going to the light, which essentially in this case is making it brighter or, or not as bright. So turning it up will allow it to go full blast. You can customize however you'd like. That's how you would generally set up a very simple layout of lighting. And you can do the same thing for another group. You know, you can add another generic set of dimmers. This would be channel five. Remember one, two, three, four, five. So you would set that dimmer pack on the DMX addressing to channel five. And you do the same thing here. 
dimmer one, dimmer two. And you would probably want to label these some way where you can keep them uh, independent of each other for the sake of knowing which light is which. So if it, let's say I located this dimmer box on stage right and the other ones on stage left, I would put an SR or an SL before the dimmer to help me remember when programming which one's which. So again, you go to learn, right click, learn, right click, learn, right click, learn, and then you can do the same thing, which, there we go, there you go, so then they would all chase the same way, fairly simple, right, so it gives more, it gets more complicated, if you want it to be, Otherwise, this is a pretty easy way to just turn lights on and off as long as everything is lined up and programmed correctly between each thing, being that the, the piano roll is connected to the lighting box, or the, the virtual lighting box, and then your, your DMX is connected, and then your cable is connecting to your light, which is assigned to the proper DMX channels. Given that you do all of those things, you will have yourself a basic light show. Now, if you want to get a little bit more complicated and start using uh, envelopes, you can assign certain things to envelopes. Let's say I don't want this light to be programmed to any one of these things so that it only turns on and off. Because the thing about doing it this way is that it's momentary. Or, um, I'm sorry, it's, yes, it's momentary. So if you press the button, it goes to whatever that velocity is, and as soon as you let go, it goes off. So there's no fading in and fading out. If you want to start doing doing things like this, where your light is slowly turning on and slowly turning off, you need to be able to have a curve. So that's how we do envelopes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to forget the MIDI function that we assigned, which means that it will no longer respond to this up here. Now, just to make sure I remember this correctly, if you want to, you want to show the track envelope. That's right. So, on channel one, let's say we're just going to do one of these because it, you really only need one to get the idea. Let's say you want to do this channel to be able to dim up and down with an envelope smoothly. So you select it, make sure it's actually selected like that. You click on parameter up here, and you can change the name of it. You can uh, do the alias, and I'll show you the, the reason for that in a minute. Show track envelope. Notice a channel pops up over here. Okay. Now, the, the setting above it, show track controls, that will show it right here if you want it, but I don't, I don't really use that. So, here it is. Let's say you don't want it to say DMXs, you know, one slash DMXs, you want it to say something else. You can't change it like you normally would if you just double click, but that's where the alias comes into play. So again, make sure it's selected, alias the parameter, you can call it dimmer one. There you go. Now it's labeled. So what we can do now, as you can see, as I drag this up, it reflects on the fader. So then what we can do is we can put another point like this, another point like that, and so on. So then when you play it, now it does motions. You can drag these up however you like. I believe if you use a certain control, you can make it curve like that. However you would like. 
so you can make it do more drastic motions or have a curve and stuff like that and the way that I the way that I did that is um, uh, actually we'll just show you brand new again if I hold shift and click this is uh this is PC by the way Mac might have control and alt switched with command and control etc you just have to play with it or you can look it up in the in the menus up here but I press shift and it gives me that one press shift again gives me another and another and another if I hold alt see the cursor changes sideways I can drag curves out like this okay that give me a different effect so that's how you would that's how you would control uh, these lights with um, fading with the faders and that's pretty much it that's uh, that's how you would how you would generally create a very basic simple light show you can do a lot with that that's pretty much how I did everything uh, to create our live show over the years uh, it developed into more complicated stuff with more lighting as more fixtures came into play and then movers started to complicate it even more but if you can grasp this understanding within Reaper then you will be able to in, over time develop more and more uh, in your programming so next video I will show you how to connect this to a full live performance session because there are some tricks to get it that way and I know that there's not really too much information out there about how to how to do this DMX stuff within this type of application so that being said if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and I hope you enjoy this and have a great day see ya